get uh, Russ up here. It's not allowing him right now. Let's move him up here to stage. Yep, he's coming to the stage. I'm going to get us live on LinkedIn. Um, all right. All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Exit Your Way Roundtable. We have a special guest with you here today. So, thanks you so much. First of all, I'm kind of I was a little confused there where, where I'm at this week has been a little crazy. Got my second COVID shot. Got sick as hell from it, but um, I'm good now because uh, we uh, it's just time. It'll get care of that stuff. So. With us today, we've got Russ Johns from the Pirate Syndicate. I'm real excited to bring him on and, and talk a little bit about podcasting. Um, we're going to get going and uh, do our normal introductions here. One of the things I want to say, if you're listening to us live on LinkedIn, go ahead and let us know where you're listening from. If you got questions throughout the broadcast, go ahead and hit them. Ira, me, we're watching the we're watching the chat. We're we're driving the chat on LinkedIn. We're watching it here on Remo. And if you're listening to us on LinkedIn or one of the other places live, you can always join us here by getting on Remo and getting on the coming and talking and you know just enjoying and building relationships. So do it. So today. We're going to do, as we normally do, we're going to let people come up and introduce themselves, and we're going to then get them to answer the infamous question of the day. So, who do we got coming up first, guys? Oh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Oh, come on up, Troy Niehaus. There we go. You are the first victim. I mean, you're the first person who gets first. First. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the victim. <laughs> hey, Troy, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? Good to see awesome. you. Awesome. Good. Awesome. awesome. It's, no, it's no joke. He doesn't even tell us, like in the green room, he doesn't tell us. We find out when you find out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Go ahead. Put me on the spot. Let's go. So introduce us, introduce yourself, Troy. Tell us what you do, man. Go no, ask the damn question. <laughs> no, no. The question after he introduces him. I am Troy Niehaus. I live out here in the great northwestern Seattle area, and I help make money meaningful for my clients. So that's what I do. I work for a global investment research and management firm called Bernstein, and I focus my practice working with entrepreneurs and business owners. Uh, so we, you know, people hire us for the advice we give. And when you have a lot of wealth comes uh, greater complexity and we help solve issues around that. Yeah, you guys are really good at it, man. I, I tell you, I'm just impressed every time I get to sit down with one of your experts or listen to you guys and, and read your materials. It's, it's good me, stuff. Man. Thank you. It, it is. I mean, it is exceptional. It is exceptional. In fact, I was talking to somebody about Bernstein yesterday. Uh, so um, good stuff. Excellent. So we're going to get to the question of the day. If you could have any exotic animal as a pet, which would it be and why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a monkey considered an exotic animal? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is. I'd have a monkey. I think, uh, you know, they're I've seen a bunch of videos lately for whatever reason on um, on YouTube or something. And these people have monkeys. They want some monkeys. And you know what? They're um, they're probably the closest thing to humans uh, you know, besides, uh, you know, chimpanzees or gorillas or something like that. And um, they're cute and they're funny. Um, so I don't know. A monkey. <laughs> I think that's, that's a great choice. That, that, if you ever watched Aladdin, you know that he's got the monkeys. He's got the monkeys. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all awesome. those kids, man. Everything yeah. goes back to a kid's movie for me. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Good stuff, Troy. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Look at all the bald, beautiful. Bald is beautiful. Look Isn't it? Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Da Damon's out of place here with no, all, all that. I don't have much here. I don't have much here, but I got some. <laughs> all right, Josh, how are you today? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Josh Curcio, Protocol Agent. Uh, we are an inbound marketing agency that works primarily with uh, manufacturing companies, helping them with their lead generation 
uh, in sales. I'm also a big HubSpot fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you guys haven't seen what the uh, if you haven't yep. seen what these guys do for manufacturers, it's really cool. They they know it. That's for sure. So, Josh, what exotic uh, exotic animal would you have as a pet? We, I am not a pet person. They, they take way too much effort and attention. They're better off with other people. Uh, we're busy on the weekends. We're gone. So I can't, I can't accept any pet. Do I have to answer? <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that, Andrew, you're, on, you're muted, Andrew. Andrew's talking to the talking to a microphone that's turned off. That's great. <laughs> Josh, try goldfish. Pretty low maintenance. Yeah, you know, we we did have a goldfish, or we had something like a betta fish. My daughter uh, kept it alive as long as she could, and then um, it perished at some point. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, <they> do. <laughs> good stuff. Well, you, awesome get, you could always get a teddy bear. You could get a teddy bear. That would work. Brad, how are you today? I am still breathing. You know, we're lucky Ooh. with that. Every, every day we wake up here in the COVID world, you know, breathing is a start, right? So Every day. Every, every day. day. Like, oh, yeah, there's the first one. So what I, what I do for my clients, is, my, my business clients, is I help them go from where they are to where they want to go. And instead of winding through all the learning process they have to, I shorten it and straighten out the line so they can get from where they are to where they want to go. And the fun part is when I get in there, and actually about two or three conversations in, I say, okay, look, you pointed at, at the top of that mountain. And like, that's just a foothill. Stop thinking that way. We're going to take you to the top of this mountain over here. And it's like four times as big, 10 times as big as what you thought you could do. And we're going to still do it in the same amount of time you thought it was going to take to get to the top of the foothill. So are you ready? Let's go. That's what I do. Awesome. Right? Awesome. So yes. you ask the question, um, what would I have? Now, you didn't say that they had to be a real exotic animal. No. 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 So I would, I would have a griffith. Right? A, a you, griffith. you know, Harry, a Harry Potter, the flying, the horse and the flying, you know? Yep. Right? Yep. <clears throat> and wow. and the, the bird beak, I would have a griffin. Would that take yep. a lot of attention? And Yeah, right? But, you know, <laughs> that's what I would have just because. That blew yeah. my mind. I know. I, I was like, I had to think, what's the Griffin? <laughs> they come back to it. And I got it help it. with your commute for sure. Yeah, well, no, that's the teleportation <laughs> button on my belt. <laughs> and I'm still looking for somebody that can help me invent that particular idea. Yeah. You know, I'm a shapeshifter myself. That would be good. Awesome having you here today, Brad. Thanks so much. Boom. Boom. Great to have you. Mark, awesome seeing you from Chicago. What's happening today? Hey, it's where's great seeing you too. The, the guitar? The, the guitar is absent. It's in It's in its case because it actually got some use this week. I took it to a friend's and strummed it. So uh, it hasn't been replaced on its stand there. So you just see the ghost of it there. Um, yeah, so good to see you all. It's raining here, um, but that's okay. It's warm. It's like 70 degrees. Um, so kind of muggy. Um, I'll talk about myself. I'm a fractional COO. Uh, I help visionary CEOs clarify their goals, growth strat develop a growth strategy, and execute on the plan. My background is in e-commerce operations. I led sales and marketing for uh, uh, and sales and marketing, product development, and customer service for an e-commerce company, an online retailer, Music Gear. Hence the guitar, um, and I helped that company grow from forty million to one hundred forty million uh, in a sa in sales over an eight year period. Since then, I've been focused on helping entrepreneurs set up systems, processes, and teams, develop sales and marketing strategy, and execute the tactics necessary for scaling, growth, and sustainable profitability. So that's what I do. Nice, nice. A and nice. Um, the animal, the pet, man, Brad kind of opened my mind. I'm thinking of dragons and all sorts of fantasy characters but you know troy really hit and I, I have this thing with monkeys this is funny the second week in a row i think we've talked about animals and and monkeys for me in particular and i like monkeys just because they're human-like they're, they're they're funny you know they're fun 
I think I would enjoy playing with a monkey. Um, it's probably <laughs> it's probably kind of dangerous and probably could beat the crap out of me too. You know, like they get angry at me, but you know, because they're yeah. strong. But uh, I think I'd go with a monkey, maybe a chimp. <laughs> there you go. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. <laughs> good stuff, Mark. Thanks yeah. for being here. Yeah, good to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Pete, how are you today? Damon, good morning. Look at how glorious the uh, the the weather is. I don't know if you're seeing it, but I got sparkling sun on the other side of the pond from you. <laughs> we have we have similar. It's not quite that good, but there's definitely a lot of blue patches. Yeah, so, so we'll take we'll take it. And I'm looking forward to hearing the great Russ Johns. Hello, Russ. Hey, hey um, Professor Pete. How are you doing? I'm fantastic, and looking forward to getting motivated from uh, what you're going to share. Um, because I have a popular podcast, the Winning a Business in Life podcast, which Mark, he was just on. He uh, His was published, uh, his episode was published a couple of days ago, and it was uh, got a lot of great comments. So, uh, in addition to being that host, I empower working professionals to go from being mentally and emotionally overwhelmed to better protecting their health and handling challenging situations with grace and success. Um, I am going to go animal-wise. I I, if it was anything at all, and I could have um, an easy way to um, keep it, I would go with a dolphin, because I think that they're from everything I've read, they're um, uh, the smartest creature, other than supposedly humans. And anyone who is um, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy understands that. Um, the dolphins were the second smartest uh, uh, animal on earth uh, and humans were third. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I would do. I'd learn are, we really that, are we really that high? Well, yeah, I mean, that's uh, 42 <laughs> from 1968 or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, you have to wonder. You wonder I've seen some really evidence high. to the contrary is all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's definitely that's plenty of that. Well, and that's, Pete, that's a sad state. Pete, great to have you here today. You bet. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Yep. Great. Well, Grant, how are you today? Yeah, I think you're a first time attender, right? Yes, I am indeed. I am indeed. I'm brand new to networking and, and certainly this platform. It's impressive, by the way. All, all with glasses. It's right in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and again, four out of five are bald is beautiful. I'm just saying. That's right. <laughs> yep. So tell us about yourself, Grant. Well, the wife and I started up a manufacturing company to address uh, a sea of contaminants. Forgive the, um, um, you know, the, the no, it, it, I don't mean to be dire, but uh, the, the, in two spaces in the, on the business, uh, on the consumer side, it's about skincare, clean formulations, and yep. uh, there's a whole conversation there. But on the business side, uh, we're producing bottles that degrade in landfill conditions. So that sea of plastics out there can actually yep. go into the landfill and quickly convert to renewable energy. Oh, Perfect. very good. Love very it. good. Well, you know, the funny thing was, is that very, very early in my career, I was in the molding industry and we oh. actually molded golf tees out of a corn-based plastic that would degrade in like on a golf course within i don't know it was like a week and they'd be nothing it was Great. really interesting um so yeah i don't know if it ever went anywhere but it was it was certainly an interesting material to work with so right yeah yeah so it's great to have you here today grant uh, an interesting thing. I mean, that's that is that is definitely something that would be uh, uh, very good. So it, it's a and, and I'll digress for a second. So it's a bottle that degrades faster over time in a landfill. That's right. Anaerobic. Well, your anaerobic. Your golf, yeah, your, yeah. Your golf tees would be aerobic decomposition, yep. but in landfill, it has to be anaerobic. Oh, nice, nice, good stuff, good stuff. All right. Well, it, Grant. So then. You know, I hate to put you on the hot seat, but you get to answer the question of the day, too. I, I think I'm ready for this. It would have been a sea otter, but in COVID, everything's so, so in, in into a very small space. It would be a lemur. A lemur. Because they're no sudden moves. They're really quiet. And they, <laughs> I, I think you could still hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. 
Good stuff. Lemur would be great. That'd be a good one. I gotta look. All up. right. Gotta so look thanks up. for being here, Grant. Love to have you. Hope you enjoy it today. Thank Who you. else we got? We we got through. Or are we through everyone now, Andrew? Nope. Um, uh, I was. He was just listening. Slacking off there. Barb. Okay. So, hey, Barb, come on up. Might as well get Andrew up as well. Yeah, we've got a few more. We've got Jacob, Jill, and AJ still. Okay. All right. Cool. Good, good morning, everyone. Hi, Barb. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, and there's Andrew. And um, it, I don't know. Pete sharing hair is awesome. He said he would shave it and give it to you guys. <laughs> on, on, his <laughs> on his back. On his back. Yeah. I've got enough. His back and give us oh, some hair. I've got enough of that. Pete, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, I hope business owners find grants and other funding for their business. Every week now, with COVID relief, there are new grants, and I now do it at the federal, state, and local level. And so, everything that comes out, I notify my clients and say, "Here, here's a new one," and then we actually fill up the application for them, and then and put it in. And there, I mean, there's hundreds of things out there now. And business owners don't have the time to look them up. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great service. It's a great service because there are so many things that we don't even think about that that uh, can help, you know, R&D and, and just labor things. Yeah, just so many different things now. Yeah. So, so many grants out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome having you here today, Barb. So what, what, what animal would you have? You know, I watched uh, an octopus. I, I watched the my octopus teacher and I thought it was beautiful about your, you know, a man decides to go visit an octopus every day for a year and, you know, their relationship and, and how it changed him significantly. And then I learned a lot about them and how and they're just amazing, brilliant creatures. Uh, but that relationship was amazing. That is that is awesome. That is awesome. I watched a little bit of that. And that that they well, first of all, they're amazing creatures because isn't there something about their genetics or that they don't it, it's different than ours or or different than just about everything else? Ah, they're they're just wild. They're wild. And I, just think, I think it's interesting that in each arm they have a brain in it that that and they all the brains work together i don't know it just fascinates me and how quickly they can change yeah. into so many different things and i don't know it, it was it was great to see i love That's how they awesome solve problems. Problems. It's funny awesome. when, you, when people talk about most intelligent creatures on earth i actually think octopuses are at the top mm -hmm. i'd put yeah. an octopus up against anybody yeah <clears throat> crazy stuff crazy good stuff well thanks for being here today barb wonderful seeing you Andrew Deutsch, how are you today, sir? I'm well. How are you? You know, good. Are you I'm sure? Vertical. I'm vertical. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not a, I'm not a more fun. cardboard cutout today, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, just so to end the rumor good. for those who saw Fang in the name there, I am not the fifth dentist that doesn't recommend sugarless gum. That's <laughs> okay. That's good. That, that's, that's what good. we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell us about yourself, Andrew. What? Yeah. Well, Fango, we're a strategy first marketing and sales consultancy. We help companies develop that core strategy before they go to the shiny toy box of all the all the tactical tools. Whether they're going to grow their business in the U.S. or in the 120 countries that we have affiliations with to to grow your business. Yeah. So, Good stuff. That's Good what stuff. we do. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. If you if you aren't following Andrew on LinkedIn and and reading his stuff, you are not laughing nearly enough. That's what I want to tell you. <laughs> it's good. It's Thanks. good. It'll it'll help you uh, with your exercising of your brain too, because Andrew's oh, yeah. are intelligent. Like sometimes it takes a second to for me to get it, but yeah, they're always Come good. On. <laughs> it's, 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 don't, belittle, don't belittle yourself you you get it <laughs> they're good they're very good i love yeah. it yeah 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 they are well it's uh, awesome so andrew what animal would you have i'm not sure because i'm afraid that my my dog might eat him right <laughs> i've he's i've had fan, enough exotic pets uh, get out of here he, <laughs> he he invades every once in a while i yeah. i think i think probably for my my aquarium there's a a, a couple of 
couple of uh, saltwater fish that I'd like to add that would be exotic that I can't afford, nor would I ever. Uh, a gem tang would probably be my 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 prize, or another wow. octopus. There you go. So. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Gotta look that one up. Gem tang. How do you spell that? G E M, like a gem, yeah. and tang yeah. is a type of fish. Okay. Oh, they, right. they usually retail for a few thousand dollars, so I'm not going to throw one in my tank anytime soon. No, I, no, I'm, I'm going to look at it. I'm gonna yeah, they're, they're gorgeous, it. but oh, yeah, little, 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 little pricey for a home. Yeah. Where, a home where are they native to? Where are they native to, Andrew? The water. <laughs> Warm water, cold water. Yeah, they're 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 uh, they're Salt a marine. Water? They're they're a marine fish. They're I think they're found in, in mostly in Asia. Okay. In Asian waters. Yeah. They're gorgeous, but uh, they're, they're really pretty to see at the aquarium when you go. Good. You can Good. go visit them. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> awesome having you here today, Andrew. Thanks, guys. So, AJ, great seeing you again from India, my friend. You show up at, in the evening there. Lovely having you. Great to be having you over here at Damon. So, how are things going on with all you people? Wonderful today. Wonderful well, today. So tell us, tell us a little about how you're helping people, AJ. Uh, I'm AJ. So basically, I'm into the staffing industry. I help my clients to fulfill their hiring requirements according to the skills they require. So mostly, I deal with the IT sector, so developers, programmers. I mean, DevOps, Salesforce, and all these kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So AJ is helping helping people in the U.S. recruit. IT people in India exactly. that can help them in their in their companies, and it's funny, AJ, because I was just reading an article this week about how important it is for manufacturers to be able to do their own uh, development, software development in house, just because you know the standard out of the box ERP systems aren't really giving them what they need, and and how much that's that's worth, and how, how exactly so. Are. So mostly it saves time. So if you just made a custom made, so rather than just getting into the outside market and just getting to fulfill according to you, rather than if you just look into the custom made, then it would be saving a lot of time of yours. Yep. Yep. As I it said to you in the last week, time cannot be replaced. <laughs> yeah, that is right. Time That's cannot right. be replaced. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So AJ, what animal would you like to have as a pet? Uh, as Pete said, dolphin. Because it is smartest than me. Yeah, I think dolphin is dolphin is a good choice. Oh, dolphin would be cool because you could go you could go for a swim with it. You could hang on and yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You can hang on and do it. Well, great, AJ. Thanks so much for being here today. Awesome. Later, brother. Good stuff. Jill, how are you today? I am so good. I'm awesome. getting a gas line installed in my kitchen. I get to have a gas stove. Oh, Ooh, nice. Days. <laughs> nice. 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 That's good. That's good. I yeah. remember we did that at our place too a while back. And that that makes it makes it nice. Very much so. Yeah. 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 Plus I get to so, hang out with all of you. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about how you're helping people, Jill. So I help the smaller businesses. Um, with their people and processes. We, we look at what's going on and where they want to be, and we align their people and their processes to bring out their best and make their, their workplace be the greatest place to be. Awesome. 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 That's, a, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. Because uh, getting the right people and, and getting them working together is the most important thing. Absolutely. It's so fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what animal would you like to have? Oh, gosh. Um, so I think I'd have a lemur. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They're, they, you know, they're cuddly and active like a monkey, but, um, and it probably comes from, you know, kids were growing up, they used to watch Zabumafu. <laughs> so they just seem like cute and cuddly and um, and yet smart. Yeah, yeah. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. All right. Well, awesome seeing you, Jill. Great to see you. You bet. You bet. Jacob Warren, we have the second 
biggest beard on the stage now with us. Russ yes, sir. Has the, the biggest beard, but Jacob is getting there. So tell us a little bit about how you're helping people, Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Russ I... can't even back up to show us this whole beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russ has to get away from the camera like this. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. No, um, I help people by simplifying technology for them. Um, and so it's a really exciting way to be able to um, take the complexities of cybersecurity and everything and, and make it a straightforward service for you to be able to focus on running your business. Yeah. Um, the animal that I truly have always wanted is a raccoon. A raccoon. There yes. you go. They they are freaky in the sense that you know they have those full hands, but they look. I mean, the people that I've known people that have had them uh, in the past, and they say they they have they're full of character, mischief, and all that stuff, and all that is fun. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. They, they are, they are, they're 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 cool little animals. It's their coloring. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yep, and those and those, you know, I don't you know. See the hands. The hand. like, look, it's raccoon colors. Yes, it is. Good it's branding. Good. good branding, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Awesome. Oh, awesome. That's a great choice, Jacob. So thanks for being here. So who are we finished now, Andrew? I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's it. All right. Well, well then let's start. Let's start with um let's start with you, Andrew, and we'll finish with Russ. And, and go from there so well uh what we do for people well damon and i at exit your way and ira and and johnny we and our team and and some of our partners with us help this small medium business owners build their companies so they can egg you know for eight figure exits and um in a variety of ways uh, through consulting services and which is fun. Anyways, on the animal thing, um, you know, I always remember that movie, um, Every Which Way But Loose, and Clint Eastwood walked around with the orangutan. And I know we've had a couple monkeys in here, but it's a very specific kind of monkey. And I always thought that was cool as shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as they're in yeah, a you know, he was his, he was his sidekick, and he, he seemed to have a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right good. turn. Uh, yeah, that's the right turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the people that are that that are a bit younger in the crowd, have no idea what we're talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's Who's that? Clint Eastwood's still alive. Big black man. He's still alive. He's, he's but he was like young. It's like, it's like talking about Dirty Harry and people have never seen that, uh, you know. Uh, but anyway, awesome, awesome. 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 All right, Ira, you're up, man. All right. So I actually put a picture, a graphic in the chat. Um, that shows you what yeah. we do at Bowman Digital Media. We really do six things. So just really simply, we do social media management. We do website development. We do graphic design, photography, videography, and SEO. That's how we help small business owners. I like to tell people I'm the Swiss Army knife of marketing. I'm really good when you don't know marketing, but you need somebody to do it for your business. That's what I do at Bowman Digital Media. For my exotic animal, I think I'm going to go a little bit out of the box here. I want to go sea turtle. It's not practical, but I'm daring the dream because I fell in love with sea turtles with the movie um, Finding Nemo, the Crush mm -hmm. character. I really like that. So, anyways, yeah, sea turtle. Yeah, sea turtles are cool. And it's they my speed. Cool. I mean, it's totally my speed. Like, I'm not like I'm not wild and crazy anymore. I'm more like I live life on purpose. So it's slow and slow and deliberate. So <laughs> yeah, sea turtle. I I still remember at my, being uh, at Malachi uh, on you know, right off of Maui, swimming with the sea turtles out there. It's freaking incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, just incredible snorkeling out there with that. It's like a life-changing experience. I love the when ocean. Seeing the water. Everything about it. I'm yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, Ira. Well, I, I'll, I'll go quick, and then we will let Russ Johns go with this. So uh, Andrew kind of talked about exit your way a little bit. 
Um, yeah, we are helping business owners grow their businesses and, and get them to the point that they're making more money today and they can sell or succeed in whatever they want uh, later down the road for the money they want. And really that that starts with getting the business running right. So it's not going to drive you to, to your grave early and uh, it's giving you the returns you want. Um, do it a lot of different ways. We do it with a lot of different companies. We we uh, are more versed in manufacturing and e-commerce companies. We do a lot of those. Uh, we we sell a, a more wide range of companies than we than we do in our consulting. But uh, yeah, that's what we do. It was born out of the fact that when Andrew and I worked for companies that were owned by private equity or investor groups. That's what we had to do. And when we got outside and started selling businesses and realized that most private business owners had little or no idea what their businesses worth were worth or the challenges in selling them. And the industry largely ignored those challenges, uh, the, the business brokers and investment bankers. We said, we're going to help these business owners get their businesses sold. And that's what we do. So <laughs> check that out. Yep. Check out Enough the chat room. Out. Check out the chat room. I know, the chat's going great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the orangutan is in the room. I love the, I love that, Mark. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell <him> Google, baby. <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, um, the, the chat, if you're on LinkedIn and watching this, you don't get to see the chat nearly as good as we do. You can see it some, but, yeah. but the chat is going hot here. So when, when you go and ask, Ask for it's animals. Split, an animal. <laughs> oh my goodness! Pete says, know, Pete says, today. Pete that's, says awesome. that's Clinton, my uncle. We had to say that one. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, the animals were two things. I I was like, first of all, someone said orangutan. That was going to be mine, and it actually was from every which way but loose, which that's awesome. Um, but the other one I was thinking about that I, I, it would be kind of scary to have, but I would like to have a rhinoceros. Oh. I don't know why. Oh, ruin your house. I, it would ruin your house, and it'd be. I was the only thing I could think of too is be really messy to clean up after. Oh yeah. But but the skin, it'd have to. I really just like to pet them. It'd be yeah. cool. If the skin well, maybe, feel weird. maybe if you could make it where it was like a dog, where it was happy. You know what I mean? Like it's a happy rhino. Yeah, yeah it has to be a happy rhino. Yeah. But yeah, that would that would be something. So that would be. Well, my, it'd be impressive uh, taking it for a walk with your Harley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, teach it right to stop. <laughs> teach it yeah. to stop. Stop. <laughs> hey, did you guys ever have that? Like when you were kids, people walking their dogs. You know what I mean. And the, the kid with the biggest dog was the badass. You know what I mean. Like, yeah, nothing that would be more badass than a rhino. Not that yeah, I think team rhino. Let's always walk around with a T Rex or something. I mean, we didn't have any yeah. dinosaur, but yeah, yeah. No, I don't want something that can eat me. Yeah, I think a rhino could do that. Honestly. Oh, yeah, rhino could kill you, but yeah. different ways. Yeah, Brad Smith is saying rhinos are outside animals. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, and now, now we're down to our special guest of the day, and then uh, we will get on to our topic. So, Russ, tell us about yourself. Well, so, I'm... Russ Johns, Pirate Broadcast, and I operate the Pirate Syndicate that allows people to be seen, be heard, and be talked about, create more content without the technical overwhelm. So we manage and handle and support you in that journey. And so it's a very simple, very focused opportunity to uh, share your gifts and your message with the world uh, through live streaming, podcasting, and content production awesome and i love uh, i've been listening to the animals and everything and i actually had used to have a farm and i've had hundreds of animals i've owned hundreds of animals and tr very traditional animals horses cows sheep chickens pigs everything in between and also at one point in time i uh my wife and i owned the number a Siamese cat that was rated number four in the nation for cat shows. And so one of the favorite things that I had uh, during that journey was a turtle. Oh, and so a turtle, 
And then I always had a fondness for fish. So uh, because they were easy to maintain, low maintenance, and they still had a personality. So that would be my choice. It'd be I would have another turtle. It's just so, one more yeah. reason to like Russ, bro. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the thing about turtles, too, is they live a long time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, you know, 40, 50 years, or, or even that, the ones in the sea, aren't they like 100 years? Hundreds of years old. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. You just wonder how, how they do that. But, my, my dad had a african gray parrot yeah they you know, live a long long time yeah yeah so and we had to give it away <laughs> oh yeah they're yeah. still alive i'm sure but yeah um, they do they do live a long time that's for sure they're a little more maintenance than turtles though yes yeah. yes well russ we're, yeah. we're happy to have you on today to talk about podcasting because we have some podcasters in the audience. There's people I'm sure that want to understand the podcasting game a little bit more and, yeah. and understand just what are some of the things that are happening in podcasting that are, you see that are, that are going, people are doing well and some of the things that people don't do well. That's a great question, Andrew, because right now there's a lot of people, there's over 2 million podcasts out there. And what a lot of people don't realize, though, is there's probably only there's less than 400,000 around there that are active and engaged in over 100 episodes. And they they live for a very long period of time. And one of the things that people think is going to happen when they start a podcast is that uh, it's going to explode and they're going to get noticed. And, and what it really is is a long game yeah it takes time to develop it's like practicing any instrument you have to get better at it you have to learn and you have to adjust and you have to maintain and so the best thing that i can recommend people think about before they start a podcast is how much effort do you really want to invest in this possible this this opportunity because it's not an overnight thing. It's not one and done. It's an ongoing, it's an ongoing uh, adventure. It's an ongoing event that can, that builds with consistency. Yeah. You know, showing up on a regular basis is what really makes the difference between having a, a podcast and, and having it have seven to 12 episodes and you know, deciding, well, nobody's watching this. I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. So it's, it's really about how much am I willing to invest in this because I, it's important to the community and it's important to me to share this information. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And I think that's, that's what a lot of people miss in it is that it's a lot of damn work. And it's it going to be a lot of damn work for a long time before you, you see anything out of it. Or if you ever will. Yeah. You got to love it. You gotta love it. Well, so I want to say this: I think podcasts are a lot like businesses. When you start your first one, it's not likely to to be success. But you can take the the takeaways in your second one, and then in your third one. And by the time you get to four or five, you you have a much better shot of rocking. Yeah. Well, yeah. the interesting thing about that, and and that's a great point, Ira, is imagine when radio first started. And how it was the media of the day and how it evolved and then how television evolved and erupted and changed how radio was perceived and accessed and how television, you know, you, ha you had maybe two or three channels at that point in time. And then Ted Turner, you know, there was a cable came on, on yeah. board and all of a sudden we have more channels, more selection process more diversity, more niches. You know, we were talking about uh, PBS and, and some of the shows that are on PBS and, and Hemingway and, and yeah. those things. Now we have podcasts and we have live streams just like this where people can actually niche down and have action. They have, it's not a, it's not a broadcast. It's an actual conversation and people can have actually 
niche down to a specific topic. And so it's actually getting more and more intimate. And it goes back to the original days of radio where they're all sitting in front of the, the radio listening to this storytelling episode about what life is all about. And we're coming back to that in a much more effective way because we can pick up our phone now. We are the media. Yeah. You have the opportunity to be broadcasting. And that's that's what the pirate broadcast is about. The FCC, if you don't have permission and you don't have a license and you broadcast anyway, you're considered a pirate broadcaster. And yeah. right now, no permission needed. You just pick up your phone and you start broadcasting. And we're living in an amazing time in a transition where podcasting is an early adoption of that next level and that next iteration of broadcasting. And you're, already seeing, you're already seeing it bared out in real numbers. Look at that. The, if you just look at the reported numbers for TV shows and even yeah. just you know, views, period, per channel, it's so much more dispersed now than it's ever been. Yeah. And the, the podcasts are part of that, the reason behind that. You can watch yeah. it whenever you want. And yeah. You don't have to be sitting in front of a television to, to listen to a podcast. Yeah. We have a good question from Mark in the comments there. It says, curious about how many hours per week are required um, to put out a podcast every week. I'm sure it changes from first time to several years in. Well, that's a great question, Mark, because think of it from a different perspective. I live stream every day and I, in the actual broadcasting time itself, I have a producer that produces my show. So the total time involved in the entire production piece is by the time the, the graphics go out, the uh, the transit uh, trans um, transcription, the podcast the, uh, is created, the posts are created, the social media after the show is put out. So there's uh, probably two or three hours a day that's invested yeah. in this process, this production, and it doesn't have to necessarily be that complex you can actually if you have a team you can just show up yeah. live stream and everything's handled for you so you're you're exchanging your you're paying for your time yeah the other side of the equation is if you do everything yourself and you're editing your own audio and you're you're posting yourself you know you could spend you could spend four hours six hours on the podcast depending on how your production some of these NPR productions, the storytelling ones where they have multiple different people, they put hours and hours and hours, dozens of hours in those productions to edit, to bring that audio together, to produce that show and, and put it out. So it's directly relationship of your time invested is, is based on the result that you're delivering to the podcast and how you're delivering that. Yeah, I don't care for uh, necessarily editing my audio as much. I process my audio to make sure that its levels are correct and you know I can reduce it and optimize it to the degree that it is. I don't necessarily go through and edit and remove all the ums and ahs and everything that goes along with that. So uh, that optimizes my time for the production team and for myself. Well, I think that's that what you're what you're saying there too is one of the things that is really becoming more prevalent now that a lot of podcasts are live streams that get converted into podcasts and they are rougher. These, these are rougher. These aren't refined uh, productions in a lot of cases. It's, it's really the rawness of them uh, translates the humanity or the person behind the podcast through them, I think in some cases. And mm -hmm. removing all the imperfections and make polishing them and making them look uh, or sound sound you know more perfect also also kind of diminishes the the value of that as a as a tool to build uh, connect and engage with your community. Well, and it's it's what result am I looking to accomplish? Uh, is it the uh, is it the well produced finished product is it yeah. is it you know it's like a musician playing uh you know playing out on the street and 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 uh enjoying music for the sake of music versus 
I'm going to go to the studio and produce an album. I'm going to produce a, a, an outcome like that. And so you just have to decide what works for you. And this is what I tell people all the time. And I coach people on decide what you're willing to give up in terms of the outcome. If you want to, if you have a gift and you have a message and you have something that you want to share, you have to decide what's the best option for you to share. Is it words, images, audio, or video? Because those are the platforms. You know, blogging is a, a very viable option, even though there's millions of blogs out there. It's still a, a viable option to, to share your message. You know, images, you know, Instagram is huge. You can actually create amazing. Ira's taken some uh, phenomenal photos that uh, go out on social media, and, and he's helped a lot of people brand their image through collecting those uh, graphics and those art, that artwork. And then also, you know, um, audio, you know, we've talked about podcasting and, and is it going to be refined? Is it going to be polished? Is it going to be, you know, you know, you're going to have uh, music in the background or you're going to have an intro and outro. Is it, you know, well-produced? How much time do you want to invest in that? And it's really, it goes about, I want to get it out to a lot of people. So you'll see people on shorts or reels or, you know, just going live on Facebook. And just getting that snappy message out there and say, this is important. And then it's more of a marketing piece to drive people back and give them a level of awareness about their website, their information, how they're, how you can connect with them and those pieces of the puzzle. And yeah. I, I, I'm a fan of video because after producing, coming from a radio background and producing shows for other people and also producing a lot of podcasts for people and editing hundreds of th not thousands of hours of audio. It's like, I don't want to necessarily edit audio right now yeah. I'm at a point in my life where I'm just going to say, I'm just going to go live and I'm going to edit myself to the degree that I can and, and work to improve that. Get some that good capturing equipment. So you don't have to do a lot of editing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hey, question from, yeah. Uh, from, from Andrew yeah. I'm in the audience, but, he, uh, Andrew's asking you uh, to talk about the power to grow a podcast as a community instead of just a static show. I think you, if you could elaborate on that. I think. So building up, the, building up the audience. Yeah. Well, uh, as you guys have experienced in this show, in this live stream, that's one area of growth. The other one is to actually engage in the community. And I, and I know this is a, a catch 22 and a, a double edged sword. And I had this conversation with Ira online, I think yesterday, Ira. And it's as you grow your brand and you grow your business and you, and you develop further, you have a tendency to get busier and busier. So your ability and opportunity to engage with your audience becomes more challenging. So building yeah. systems that allow you to work, not necessarily bots to go out there and spam people. Right. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is internal systems that allow you to say, okay, I'm going to block off an hour a day for this activity, or I'm going to reach out and make that connection with somebody in my community to make sure that I stay engaged and in, in contact with them or have moments that you can actually send out newsletters, emails, and get them onto your own network so you can actually start the conversation with them. Another thing that I think has really been uh, that I've noticed online for growing community is having private sessions with your community where you can actually teach and share and build information just like this. And so that's a great question, Andrew. I love it. And uh, and I know you're a master at it. So. Thanks for asking asking the question. Hey, Russ, I think that ties in, wouldn't you agree, to what you said in the in the beginning about picking what's most important to you and what you're willing to give up, sacrifice. Because if yeah. you're if you're looking for to make podcasting your main source of income, then you better plan on spending a lot of time developing that those relationships. Because if you're putting out message and then not addressing the audience. Eventually, they're not going to care anymore because they're going to see you as, you know, something other than authentic, I guess. Yeah. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, I think right now, 
podcasting is all about the community. You know, if you're building a community, and I'll give you an example because a lot of people in podcasting, and I'm watching this and I'm observing this from some other uh, people that are making progress, is that they think if I have a podcast and I get a million downloads or whatever the number is, whatever number that happens to be, then I'm going to get a sponsor to pay for my show. <laughs> All right. When in reality, we need to turn it upside down and see a different perspective. What we what we need to do is build a community and then find a sponsor that wants access to that community. Yeah. So if you build a healthy community and you have access to these individuals and you say, who would be willing and able to complement this this audience with and bring value to my community yeah that i could include in the equation it's yeah. not the other way around it's like who do i want to include in my community and who's 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 willing to help me support this community yeah. and and that's a new perspective that a lot of people miss out on initially yeah. it's it's uh, a great point it's a great point because it's it should, it should help to build the community you know because if you're gonna if you're gonna take the time to build a community around a podcast or live stream and and if you brought the wrong sponsor in, it could kill your community. So that's a good point. There's one more. There's one more component though. So we've got a three-legged stool, and we've only talked about the two legs. Let's bring the third leg in, okay? And that's the odd or the guests. So when you're talking about bringing in a sponsor that fits the message and the audience, you also have to consider the guests, and that actually I think is one of the time-consuming parts of this that most people don't think about. You've got to book good guests, which takes time and effort. So yeah. Russ, we're going to talk about that, um, the importance of the guests and bringing in the right guests to, to build that show up. So I smile when you, when you talk about that, Ira, because a lot of podcasters really struggle with that process. Right. And, um, Damon, you and Ira, I don't think you've been on, Andrew, I don't think you've been on the Pirate Broadcast, have you? So so let me ask you about your experience on becoming a pirate. You, you've got a dial. You've got it dialed in. I mean, yours yours is so dialed in, it's, it's remarkable. Well, one of the unique things that Russ does, if you guys have never been invited to be a guest, is he does... If he's got a personal approach, but it's also a professional approach. So he combines the professional with the personal, and he records just a, a minute or so video to invite you. And then after you sign up, there's he helps guide you through this process. And even after you're done, hey, thanks for coming on. It's like yeah. consistent. those touches are um, of, above and beyond. And I still I've been on a lot of podcasts. <laughs> oh yeah yours is yours is dialed in far and beyond better than any that i've ever been on before just so the, how you treat the guest that the guest experience yeah so the guest experience is is what i've learned from years of doing this right so the true secret sauce is that your experience is what you could also create for your broadcast by using the pirate syndicate. Mm -hmm. So, so there again, it, it's, it's changing the model. The pirate broadcast is actually providing the experience that you could achieve through, you know, production of the pirate syndicate. Yeah. Yeah. So those systems, that process, everything that goes along with that, yeah. if time is your most important result, because let's look at the results. What, what's the result that I want to achieve? If time is important in its critical factor, then it's resources. You need to find a, a team to do something for it. Yeah, you mean getting and it, in and getting out quickly, right? Yeah. Take all your and then also, is is my uh, priority to to train my team to do this for me and and go through the techno technological overwhelm, yeah. or is it do I delegate that to somebody that already knows how to do that? So by inviting people onto the pirate broadcast, they get to experience the process that the pirate syndicate can deliver. So yeah. I'm I'm using my tool 
to deliver and eat my own dog food and also provide an experience for people that I can then ask them, how was your experience? And is this something that you would like to do for yourself? The other factor is that it's, it, it's so approachable and so easy that there, a lot of people fail to realize how difficult and how many steps are required to get something out. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a process. So they, they don't, they don't, um, because they don't know what they don't know. Right. Yeah. You'll learn. You're going to learn the same thing that the rest of us have learned over the years. Yeah. 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 And that's, and you bring up a good point. And, and that's why I think it is valuable for people to really think about what their, what, what their limiting factors are, you know, in time is what you're talking about with the, the pirate syndicate where, where you can show up. Yeah. You do a podcast and that's what you do. You show up and do the podcast. You, and, yeah. and if you do with someone like, like your, your help to do that, or you can go through the, the, the time and effort to figure out all this. And I, I can't even imagine producing the whole thing myself and, and doing the whole, whole nine yards myself, you know, because it's, it's, there's so many hours in this when you look at it. Let's, yeah. let's take this back. I want to go back to Ira's question though. Is that where you're going, Ira? Yeah. Well, I was even, I was going to say this. Remember high school when we, I don't know if you guys were in the drama department, right? But I was in drama. You had yeah. two kinds of people, almost always. You had the, the onstage talent, and then you had the, the techs building yeah. the stage. Well, if you want to run a podcast successfully, I mean, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, and you don't want to pay anybody, you better have been that one unicorn out there that was yeah. good at both sides. Because yeah. it, it, there's a lot of technical stuff, and then, then, and then you've got to be lively enough and interesting enough to engage an audience in the front of the camera. And, like... I'm pretty good speaking to people, but even I don't think that I'm a perfect podcast host. I really think it takes a special talent to do that well. So that's what it is, though. If you want to do this all yourself, you better be really, you better be really good, like a decathlete. You know what I mean? You're good at all of them. Yeah. 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 Well, well, I, I think uh, on the other hand, though, too, you know, as what Russ is really doing here, which I think is really cool, um, is part of the pirate network, is he's making something that's not accessible to a lot of people um, to be able to, to reach out and, and, and put something together like that, that, uh, you know, that takes a lot of resources uh, to do. That's big company stuff. That's big government, big organization. Um, you know, you know, a little rough around the edges doesn't matter. You know, it's a style choice. But, you know, if you know, uh, and I, I, I agree with you how to do it or the art of doing it, but it's also, um, you know, utilizing these uh, ways to get in um, by leveraging and, and using and, and using people like yourself, Russ, that's yeah. say, hey, we can do this, too, and should. Russ, because, Russ, uh, Russ is doing something that we're doing at Exit Your Way, right? Let's just draw an analogy between the two. Well, that, that's, is, that's why we, yeah. that's why we made a connection for you. Like it's allowing you to source the things that you're not good at. So you yeah. can focus on the things that you are good at and get on with your day. Right. Yeah. That's what exit your way does with businesses. Yeah. That's what Russ is doing with the pirate syndicate. Um, yeah. Who you bring in yeah. is important, whether it's somebody on your team or like we were just getting ready to talk about the guests. Because the guests that's, can help you. That's cool. The guests that's can help very you in a variety cool. of ways too to make up for your deficiencies if you're bringing in good. Yeah, because in a lot of respects, Ira, that's a great point. A lot of a lot of podcasters interview individuals that could be potential clients. Yeah, and it's a great way to invite someone on and say, "Hey, I'd love to interview you on my show." Is a lot different conversation than, "Hey, I would like to introduce you to the products I want to sell you." Right. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. My X Y Z. No. <laughs> so, and what, once you have them on your show and you have a conversation and you get to follow up and, and they have a good experience, yeah. then all of a sudden it's a different conversation. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm coming up on 400 episodes. Wow. And so, and I've That's I've. <laughs> yeah, that's why my beard's so long. <laughs> and, and it's it's really about uh, you know the pirate broadcast for anyone that's watched it or experienced it. It's it's about highlighting other people. It's not necessarily 
I'm not necessarily telling you how great life is for me. It's not, you know, look at my Mercedes or my Lamborghini or anything like that. It's not like that. It's, it's more of a down home. I'm curious about what other people do and how they do it yeah. and shine the light on them. But ultimately it's the experience and the results that I can deliver through that experience and getting people on the show has never been a challenge for me. And I think it's because like Ira said, the experience that people have when I send them a personal video or I send them a short video and they walk through this process and they can get on board and then the reminders and then the graphics that get created and everything that goes along with that. That's, that's been years of development. Yeah. So it's like, if you want to start this from zero in your organization, uh, oh, you know, it's going to take some time. So be oh, patient wow. with yourself yeah. or, yeah. or coaches, the best coaches hire coaches, right? Yeah, right. The best teams have teams. So yeah. well, and also uh, you, can, you can tell who's doing it right by who gets emulated. And I told you this a couple of years ago, Russ, I, I saw your pirate broadcast and you had the PNG overlays and I had never seen anybody incorporate it like that before. And I'm a graphic artist ago. That's a no brainer for me, bro. I'm ta I'm taking that idea. So when you see Bowman Digital Media, like my Marketing Monday shows and stuff like that, yeah, I have those. I got that idea from you. Like I've yeah. I've taken more ideas from you than any other podcaster because what you do is so good. Like yeah. it's top, it's top shelf work. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you saying that, Ira. That means a lot. But it's yeah. true too. It's not, it's not just a hyperbole to make it feel good. I mean, it, that's. No, it's it's the truth. It's the truth. You're that good. It's that good. And I mean, I that that's that's yeah. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And I, I'm so thankful, Russ, that you're able to come here today. And and as usual, our time is our time is is over here. Andrew we're, hasn't yelled at us yet, but he's getting ready. Andrew to hasn't yelled at us yet. So we're, it's we're, too we're, interesting. Yeah, uh, let, let it roll. Yeah. Let it roll. I just do want to. Uh, uh, just express my gratitude for you being here today, Russ. And I, 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 I do, I do want to do that because you are what I, what I consider as like the, the OG of, of the, oh. of the podcasting world here. That's so, way to say it. yeah. So that's, thanks so much for being here today. Yeah. And, uh, um, any parting thoughts? First of all, I'll let you do that. Oh, he's got, Absolutely. He's got a parting thought. I'm not going to steal. Yeah. I'm not going to steal your ending line there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always I wake up with gratitude, and I just believe that kindness is cool and smiles are free, and and I just want you to enjoy your day. Come on, <laughs> awesome. There you go, right? Yeah. Andrew, take it away, my friend. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, how do you you know how do you follow that? Bro, that <laughs> Let it go. Really, I didn't follow that, but uh, thank you very much, Russ. This was fantastic. Um, you know, as we endeavor into our media here a little bit in our own way, yeah. <laughs> talk about style choices. But, um. <laughs> well, you'll have to join me on the pirate broadcast now, Andrew. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I would, yeah, that would be an honor. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, thanks very much. And, and as usual, everybody, we will stick around. Uh, we're going to close off the uh, presentation, then back to the tables if you want to hang out. And network a bit once we're doing that go Just ahead for anybody for anybody who hasn't heard we're doing on tuesday yeah there you go. now this is pacific time 10 a.m pacific to 11 30 pacific time we're doing a uh business accelerator blitz for entrepreneurs okay it's free we're going to talk about 12 different topics that can help you take your small business to the next level our goal is to get you from a small M uh, smb to sme if you don't know what that is talk to me i'll explain it okay but it's free. It's going to be here on Remo. We uh, have the posts and stuff on uh, our Exit Your Way yep. page and on our website. If you have a landing page. That's Tuesday the 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific. We're going to have the Entrepreneurial Accelerator Blitz. We're going to be talking about some of the things we do, uh, some of the techniques you can use, not what we do, the techniques you can use to help your business. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us on LinkedIn Live. We're going to go, we're going to go off there. And then we're going to go back to the tables of Remo. So have a great day, everyone. Take care. Thank you.